Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining this session. Uh, there are more people than I expected. Almost a full house, so thanks a lot. Uh, my name is Chila Jigri, and uh, I'm VP of Strategy at uh, BTP. We are an enterprise blockchain uh, company. And what we are going to do in this session is to demonstrate how easy it is to deploy an enterprise blockchain stack on top of Kubernetes and using our management and operations platform. But before that, uh, I wanted to set the context a little bit. We are going to say things like Hyperledger saw, Tooth Bezos, smart contracts, things like that. And, and I want to have a common understanding of where these different things fit. So just to... Talk, uh, spend a few minutes on the big picture, if it works. Ah, yes. So this, uh, yeah. So this landscape shows the broader distributed ledger technology space. We use DLT as the umbrella term. Blockchain would be a type of uh, uh, distributed ledger technology. And I don't think you'll be surprised to see that the landscape start with the computing infrastructure layer that obviously underpins a lot of things and DLT is no exception in that. Here you will see, you know, the typical, um, you know, cloud providers, you know, AWS and so on. You can see, you know, things like Suzy Rancher as well. I'm trying, oh yes, you can see. There's a little delay. Uh, and also, you know, uh, container orchestration tools like Kubernetes. We are, we actually extensively use this tool. In, in, in our platform. So essentially, you know, uh, a DLT-based application, or the, well, a DLT-based network and an application on top can be uh, deployed um, in the cloud, it can be deployed on premises and in a mix of these two uh, environments. Then uh, the next layer would uh, sort of, um, is made up of uh, the core distributed ledgers. Uh, we differentiate between uh, permissionless, permissioned, and hybrid protocols. Uh, just uh, a f uh, right now, companies are using you know a number of these. It's uh, we're sort of living a multi-chain or multi-ledger world. They uh, choose one based on you know their requirements, based experience or skills that they have, or vendor relationships, and so on. So a few maybe, obviously, uh, you may know the Hyperledger Foundation is part of the Linux Foundation. Uh, they have a few uh, projects in this layer. Hyperledger Bezu would be one, which is actually a pro one of the protocols that we uh, support. Another example would be Hyperledger Bezu. If we move up also, you know, we all, well, I always like to say that blockchain technology is just doesn't stand on its own and it's used in combination with, you know, obviously other technologies as well, whether those are established ones or emerging ones. You know, it could be something like very simple as, you know, we all know distributed file systems, we have been, you know, using them for years, but you can uh, put a distributed ledger underneath and then make it more, you know, decentralized. Um, also, you know, for example, other te well, blockchain can be used in conjunction with artificial intelligence, with IoT. There's actually a very cool project, for example, uh, Helium, that uh, is, uh, they provide a decentralized um, wireless infrastructure for this short-range type of IoT devices. It's a very, very cool project. So they, they take advantage of, you know, different uh, technologies uh, in combination. Then, if we move up the stack, Interoperability, obviously, that's <laughs> important everywhere because, again, we are in a multi-ledger or multi-chain world, so you have to make these things work together. Uh, and also, you know, legacy systems used by different enterprises. So you want to make sure that, for example, you can interact and transact across, you know, different systems uh, uh, as smooth as possible, seam as seamlessly as possible. So there are a number of, uh, this is a very fragmented space still, but there are a number of uh, projects that are focusing actually on on this, as well as in different standards organizations. And then if we move up, obviously smart contracts and asset tokenization is a very important layer uh, in this space. Uh, smart contracts are known as transactor, uh, transaction protocols that run on a distributed ledger, but they can also run on a database, but yeah, I would always prefer that they run on a distributed ledger. Uh, smart contracts essentially just uh, automate and formalize relationships uh, between organizations, individuals, and even machines with, when it comes to IoT type of use cases. And, you know, asset tokenization has been, um, now well, we talk a lot about cryptocurrencies and so on, but, you know, other type of assets can also be tokenized and, and uh, we can move them, well, trade them on, on, on a distributed ledger and using smart contracts and so on. 
And then the next layer sort of uh, comprises all the you know, tooling for, for developers that can, um, both developers and users, just to make their lives easier, and also the integrations with you know, existing uh, business applications that you know, have been around for years, but now you can you know, enhance that with uh, distributed ledger, enhance them with you know, just integrating smart contracts and so on. And then on top of you know, all this stack, you can find a wide range of industry-specific applications, decentralized marketplaces, you know, across, across many, many uh, industries. And for the sake of this um, well, presentation today, the important thing is that obviously, as you can see, um, this is not. This is pretty complex. There are a lot of moving, moving parts. They need to work together. You know, many organizations don't have the expertise. So there are companies that actually can make this easy for, for you know, organizations. And we are in the platform space, which you can uh, see on the uh, left-hand side. We are BTP. We have this uh, management operations platform that is uh, called Sextant. Uh, we are essentially what we do is basically just provide all the technology infrastructure and the tools that you need to 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 be able to. Uh, build multi-party applications. And then obviously there are other companies in our space as well as you know in the professional services space that they would even you know help you with business requirements and, and help you you know whatever you have a, a use case just builds uh, everything from scratch and, and, and even you know deploy it for you and so on. So this is this is the big big picture and uh, now I'm going back to because now is where Sexton comes into the picture. Yeah again you know, it's the basic value proposition of, of this platform is just to make it easy for you to build a multi-party application so you don't have to worry about that, you know, painful underlying technology infrastructure. We can, you know, Sexton can, 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 can do that for you. So Sexton, uh, very, very briefly, it's a Kubernetes native uh, management and operations platform. It can, yeah, it deploys and manages, you know, um, a range of uh, uh, blockchain protocols. Mostly, we are mostly focusing on permissioned and hy hybrid type, not, not so much on the permissionless ones. Uh, uh, Sextant also can overlay support for uh, smart contract uh, runtime environments. We now um, support two um, smart contract languages. One is Digital Assets Demo language and uh, the World Wide Web Consortium's WebAssembly language. And uh, we can also, uh, you know, use Sexton to to deploy this decentral, as I mentioned earlier, decentralized file systems, document management systems, and so on for you know any type of business critical data. And then uh, we have there's some actually something new. We we recently uh, launched a, a provenance solution. There's also a powered by Sexton, which essentially. Um, provides you with the, the capability to track you know, any type of physical di digital asset uh, immutably. So the good thing about Sextant, I guess, that we, we, we package it, uh, we provide you know, long-term uh, uh, support. Uh, we, we, Duncan, well, our CEO Duncan here likes to call it uh, multi-party middleware that we you know, provide as a software distribution, we, we built it, we tested it, and it's maintained by us, so you don't, you don't have to worry about all that. And then, again, so the areas that Sextant covers would be, you know, the distributed ledger, so you can use it to deploy very quickly a blockchain-based network. You can also, you know, use it to deploy a, a decentralized secure file system. You can also, you know, Again, deploy it and accelerate the, the adoption of smart contracts because you can you, you, you can you know forget about the runtime environment and everything. You you just have to focus on your business logic or the application, and then again, uh, provenance. We, we uh, sex and supports our our chronicle uh, product that uh, it's blockchain bad obviously and it's a domain agnostic provenance solution. So this is, you know, if you remember the, the DLT landscape that I showed you, that's a general one for the, for the market, and this is our view of it, and these are the areas that we cover. So this is just, I guess, uh, we like to see graphics, uh, uh, so it sort of il il illustrates where we are, right? So we use, we, we take extensive use of Kubernetes, the distributed ledgers that we 
currently or support or will support very soon, you know, include Hyperledger Bezu and Soto, which we already support, and Fabric and Corda is coming. Uh, soon, we also support some databases. Sometimes enterprises want to uh, deploy a smart contracts on uh, on a database first, and then maybe move in to a distributed ledger a bit later. And then, uh, in terms of yeah, information security, uh, there's this um, uh, cybersecurity firm uh, from the US that we work with uh, called Techion. So they are using uh, Hyperledger Sawtooth and our uh, Sextant to, to provide a decentralized and secure file system. In terms of smart contracts, as I mentioned, uh, we provide support for demo and WebAssembly, and our, our provenance product is uh, called Chronicle, which is also blockchain-backed. And then you have Sextant, which you know takes sort of takes care uh, of everything uh, on on this stack. And in terms of customer uh, stories, just where Saxon is being used uh, in production, uh, just obviously we, we are in a finance event, so there are a few clients in the, from the financial sector, as well as insurance that we, we work with. Uh, one example is an insure tech company called the Demex Group. They they are using Saxon to they have a, they have built an innovative risk management platform to help organizations um, build uh, climate uh, change uh, climate resilience into their business models uh, they are using in terms of technology, underlying technology, they are using uh, both Hyperledger Sawtooth, the demo smart contracts on top, and then uh, underneath that uh, an, an Azure Kubernetes service. Liquid Share is another uh, uh, company, it's a French startup, uh, financial startup, is owned actually by a number of uh, big European banks, and they have launched a um, Cutting edge uh, uh, post rate platform, and they were using Sextant. Uh, in terms of the technology specifically, they are also using the uh, demo smart contract, uh, but they are using it on top of Hyperledger Bezu. And then, in, in terms of the infrastructure, they are using Google Kubernetes Engine. And then another uh, uh, example would be the Tel Aviv Stock Exchange. They built a lending platform using uh, Sextant. They are not using smart contracts, but they uh, have deployed a uh, hyperledger to Sawtooth as, as their distributed ledger on top of the Rancher Kubernetes engine. So these are some of the examples where Sextant is already uh, sort of working and being used. And now, uh, demo time, so I'll ask uh, Duncan Johnson what is our uh, is the CEO of BTP, and he's going to do a demo. Thank you. Yep. Thank you, Chilla. Thank you. So um, I'm going to run a couple of demos, and uh, there's a one in saying, never work with children, animals, or CEOs. So I apologize in advance. Uh, so the first, uh, the first is really looking at setting up and installing uh, Sextant itself. So we mentioned earlier, Chilo mentioned that Sextant is a Kubernetes native uh, management and operations platform. And so what we did uh, not that long ago, in fact, was uh, we integrated it into the Suzy Rancher marketplace. Now, if you don't know what Suzy Rancher is, it was originally Rancher Labs. Um, Chris Anacek from CNCF is here. Um, uh, we have some folks from, uh, like FX from Suzy, if you have questions about that. But essentially, um, uh, it's an open source uh, uh, container management platform that lets you roll out um, uh, any number of uh, Kubernetes clusters and manage them. And that's really, really important because you know, the theme throughout this, whether it's what we're doing at the sort of blockchain DLT level or whether it's what uh, companies like Rancher are doing at, at this sort of Kubernetes level. It's all about ensuring that there is very solid management because what you can't afford to do with these technologies is deploy them and then you lose track of things and you, know, you, you can't maintain a production grade service level agreement. And I'm actually originally from financial services and so I do understand SLAs. I do understand what it means to roll out a production system and you can't half transact, you can't half trade. Um, so, so with that in mind, a uh, couple of things, uh, and I think these slides will be available later. There is a, there's actually a guest blog that, um, that Chilla wrote that actually describes in detail how to do what I'm going to do, um, uh, uh, he said, optimistically. Um, and then there's also a cookbook. So cookbooks are the things that our DevOps engineers like to write, which are very sort of nitty gritty, but give you the same information in a way that you can just follow um, so right now I have, and here is one I made earlier, um, we, we run a, um, 
routinely within within our sort of organization we run a, 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 a rancher environment which is as you can see here ranchers.dev.catanasis.com so catanasis or catanasis is is a domain we use for a lot of our internal work blockchain tp obviously for the external and what's interesting with Susie rancher from 2.6 onwards is they created this notion of a marketplace and so what does that actually mean it means that you have available a set of curated Helm charts that the Suzy Arancha team maintain themselves. So those are core, um, core. In fact, we can look at what they are if we if we change the selection here and just take the partners out for a second. Um, uh, now you can see uh, a range of curated Helm charts that are supported by the Suzy Arancha team. So things like Longhorn, if you're familiar with that. Uh, uh, Neu vector uh, and so on and so forth. But what's interesting for us as a partner is that they've actually also introduced this notion of creating a set of um, uh, Helm charts provided by partners. And you go through this whole sort of onboarding process. So this is not, you don't just rock up and do this. Um, and as, in fact, you can see here, you can add your own uh, uh, your own uh, repos whilst you're experimenting. So B2B stable, B2B test. B2B unstable is what that actually means. Rest assured, is <laughs> um, uh, this is this is uh, this is I love engineers. It's like the, uh, they say they it does what it says on the tin. That's the experimental uh, uh, version of many of our sort of Helm charts. But anyway, sticking with the, this and just uh, coming over here, I'm just going to look for sextant, um, and this is standard for any of these any of these packages. What you're essentially doing is you're providing. Um, the Helm chart, you're also providing uh, some, some, you decorate it essentially so that then Rancher knows to pull in information and create a sort of a very, very easy to use installation process. So, so if you click install, and just to prove that there is, there is currently nothing there, I'll just go back here for a second, there are no installed apps. So this is, this is high wire without a safety net. Um, so what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to um, specify a namespace. It's always a good idea when you're working with Kubernetes not to just push everything into the same namespace. You're then destroying the value of, of one of the values of the Kubernetes sort of product, which is to allow you to segment things. So, so I'm going to use the sextant namespace. Uh, and then I'm going to go next. Now, this is the only bit where you actually have to interact with us. And so you have to go and get credentials. The reason for that is that uh, and we will probably be changing this over the course of the summer, but right now we, we, we want to engage with people, uh, which in the open source community, it's this sort of, do I, don't I? Do you just push stuff out there and let people use it, or do you want to have some kind of uh, uh, you know, engagement with them? So right now, we, we, we politely say, would you mind just pinging us and we'll give you the user credentials? So what does that mean? It means that this allows us, or rather it allow, allows the Helm chart that's running behind the scenes to actually pull through our sextant uh, 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 Docker images from a, a repo that is obviously behind uh, user credentials. So I'm just going to load these here. Uh, and I stored them because uh, it's much easier to store them using LastPass or something like that. And this was actually originally part of a tutorial that we did for SuzyCon a few weeks ago. So this is, these are the credentials that I, that I was given. There are a few other things I could set here, but I'm just going to accept the, the default. So for example, here I'm saying just, just create and an, uh, an use a, an internal database to store any of the sextant state. You could, of course, actually connect this to an existing uh, uh, Postgres database. So anyway, hit install. Say a prayer to the demo gods. Um, so what's it actually doing? It's literally what's going on behind the scenes is, um, and I should have said, by the way, I'm operating within one of these clusters. So I skipped the bit where, you know, because Rancher allows you to set up access to multiple clusters, I'm just using the default one, which is normally called local. So what it's now doing is, and it's done it. Okay, so it's now installed Sextant. Uh, we can see that because um, if, I, if I come across to here, um, I can't actually access Sexton at the moment, so there's nothing running there. But if you look at the instructions in, in the Rancher install, what it's saying to me is, I, and this is a sort of easy way of doing it, is I, I can just basically, um, if I can manage to operate a computer, 
I can grab that. And what this is doing is it's just for convenience, for the purposes of this demo, it's just saying, fine, I'm just going to uh, run this and um, and connect through to the Kubernetes, uh, sorry, to Sextant, running the Kubernetes cluster using something called port forwarding. Okay, so what that now means is if I go back to here and click on here and hit refresh, right? So I'm now so a moment ago or a few moments ago, we didn't have an a, 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 a running example of Sextant, which is, as I say, a Kubernetes native uh, management operations platform. We now do have one. And you'll notice that uh, when you install it, it also gives you um, uh, uh, a way of extracting the, the, the full admin credentials. So admin being the username and uh, a, a generated uh, uh, password. So I'm just going to, again, pull these through from here. So far, so good. Um, so the first thing to note is that because we've done this as part of the installation within the Rancher world, we've automatically pulled through the definition of local, which was the cluster that, um, that we've installed Sexton on. Now, that's quite convenient. Uh, you can, of course, add other clusters. So if I step back a minute and say, well, what is Sexton really doing here? Um, it's really only concerned with three things, users, um, we have a default user, so we use that. Uh, clusters, so the, again, in the same way that the Rancher, Susie Rancher manages clusters, we also need to talk to clusters. Now, we're not managing them. Somebody else is creating them, deploying them, and so on. But what we need to do is, is get the service, uh, create a service account and get the credentials so that we can actually interact with, with that cluster. And interacting with it means we can ask it to do things. We can ask it to install uh, using Helm charts. So behind the scenes, Helm charts, Helm charts, Helm charts. So with Helm, with, the, with Helm version 3.x onwards, uh, we return to using Helm because it's, it's now super clean and easy to use. Um, so everything, whether it's, uh, whether it's the, the rancher guys uh, importing things into the marketplace, whether it's us creating these, these deployments uh, around DLT, smart contracts, and so on, what we're all doing behind the scenes is curating Helm charts and making sure they're robust, versioned, et cetera. So clusters are... You know, the target environments, and then deployments are really, this is where we get into that stack that Chilla showed you where we're actually going to pick and choose, right, do I want Sorted, do I want Damo and Bezu, uh, et cetera. So, so if I stick with the clusters, um, I also have a sort of simplified, super simplified read-only view, just so you can see here, this is a, obviously this is an actual EKS cluster that's running in uh, EUS1, for those that care about these things. Um, there are no deployments running there, uh, so uh, uh, so what, what am I going to do? I'm going to add a deployment. So this is really where it starts to get interesting. So uh, you know, the the choices here in the in the in the in the community edition are somewhat restricted at the moment. We're just focusing on Bezu, Sawtooth, and Damwon Bezu, Damwon Sawtooth. That's because with companies like Tachyon, who we're working with in the infosec space, yeah, you know, we're not allowed to distribute. And make their stuff freely available because obviously it's a partnership. Um, Chronicle uh, is not here yet, but will be added shortly. So because that's ours, we have full control over that. But again, going back to that picture that Chilla showed you, the key thing here is to give you a kind of a set of options. So uh, I will I will start with my favourite, which is Sawtooth. And again, in much the same way that the installation process that was presented by Rancher a few minutes ago. We are also simplifying things, so we're saying, look, we'll, we'll, we'll provide the sensible defaults for you. Now, uh, we've kind of gabbled our way through this and sort of never really said what a distributed ledger is when it boils down to it. What it is in this case is going to be four nodes which are wired up uh, that have a protocol uh, that, that allows them to talk to one another and establish consensus. Why is consensus important? Because you only ever update the state of the world when there is agreement amongst those nodes. And four is the magic minimum. So you can't do anything with less than four nodes because you want to be able to assure that you know, we can continue to operate even if we lose a node. Um, if I go from four to seven nodes, I can afford to lose two nodes before I have to sort of halt the network until things have repaired, and so on and so forth. So basically, what you're doing with, and this is true of a lot of the consensus um, uh, mechanisms, is you want to make sure that uh, that there's, no, there's never more than a third 
of the nodes either under attack or out of action. If there are, then you, you cannot proceed because you cannot, uh, you cannot uh, create consensus. Consensus, is, it's, it's in our world, in the world of permission, it's a mathematical consensus algorithm called normally practical Byzantine fault tolerance or Istanbul uh, Byzantine fault tolerance, which is, which is the Bezu version. Uh, but these are not proof of work. Uh, so we're not consuming you know, vast amounts of electricity, uh, however cheap or not. Um, so I'm going to give this a name. I'm good on names, sorted deployment and sorted namespace. I was running this during one of the keynotes. It worked twice, right? Engineer's induction, OK. Once, phew, complete fluke. Second, all right, we're motoring. Now three, it's, it's the universal truth. So will this, will this actually work three times? Um, so what we're saying here is we're going to accept those defaults. And as I said, we're now going to, and if you recall, um, we've got a four node cluster, conveniently. Uh, so we now hit deploy. And now literally what we're doing is Sexton is talking to that cluster, in this case, the local cluster in, in Rancher terminology. And it's now saying, right, I want to roll out a four node network. Um, uh, and I can have a quick look at that network. Um, and it's just coming up. There we go. So what, what have I actually done here? So um, again, harking back to what Chilla was saying earlier, you know, we want to ensure that you, if you're developing an application, if you're working with Sortu directly, then you're creating things called transaction processes. If you're working at the smart contract level, then obviously you're developing smart contracts. But whichever level you're operating at, we want to provide a very solid runtime environment for you. And we do that so you don't have to worry about it. So that you can then get on with doing the cool stuff, which is creating these new multi-party applications. Um, so what we're looking at here is, is a summary view of there are four nodes, there are a bunch of services associated with them. Uh, and you know, if you don't believe me, I'm sure you do, but you know, I can come over to here. Uh, uh, and I can look at where am I? I'm on, I'm on the local cluster. Um, there is a namespace called Sawtooth. So if I switch to that, and this is sort of showing how the, uh, yeah. So that, so essentially, and look, 79 seconds earlier. So, you know, we actually built this from scratch in front of your eyes. Um, so now if I come back to Sexton one more time, uh, the, you know, we're not stopping there. You can also, you can go back to your cluster, uh, look at it again. Now we can see that we've got sort of deployed. We can now add Dam on Bezu. Um, now, to add Dam on Bezu, there's one thing you need to know, which is you need to actually uh, add image pool secrets. So I'm not going to actually do that here. I don't want you to see my image pool secrets. But essentially, what's going on here is there are certain components that we want to pull through that are, again, in a, in a repository, a Docker repository that we manage. Um, but hopefully, uh, you get the idea of what we're trying to do. Um, uh, and that basically ends the demo. Um, hopefully, we've got time for a few questions. Um, we're everywhere. If everywhere is Edinburgh, Barcelona, London, New York, and San Francisco. By the way, Edinburgh is now the number one city in the world, according to Time Out. Uh, number so one what? City in the world. Best place to live. Best place to live. Okay. Uh, what else? So, but so you're all welcome. Uh, but we have time for a few questions if people have any. Yes, please. I'm sorry, it's a stupid question. Running the blockchain. Yep. Okay, can I answer that? Yeah, yeah. Um, so the big difference, and this was something that Chilla talked about in terms of the types of, uh, of blockchain or DLT, uh, majority of the, 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 the public ones have some form of native token, and there's some way of rewarding participation. When you're working with the, 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 the uh, permissioned or hybrid world that we, that we live within, you actually have to take a different point of view, which is you govern 
who can contribute nodes, and so there's a whole layering of, of that. So you're not so you're not rewarding people simply by rocking up and adding a sawtooth node. What's actually happening is that that sawtooth network is being used, for example, at the Tel Aviv Stock Exchange to build out a securities lending platform. And in the same way that there's, you know, you're all in, uh, I hope you're all familiar with things like message-oriented middleware, right? Um, there is this thing called the internet, but when you're actually working within a bank or financial institution, you'll roll out a, uh, a, you know, a, a message bus, but your message bus might, you know, might extend quite far into sort of uh, into in, into other companies, but uh, you know, and it may even be the Swift network ultimately or something like that. But in general, you're not doing a one. There's no there's no notion of a single blockchain. What there is 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 a number of different blockchain networks, and that's why interoperability and bridging between them becomes important. So in the in the enterprise space, which is where we live, it's all about you know whether it's whether it's somebody operating the network as literally the network operator whether it's somebody doing that and then adding participants who can contribute nodes, or whether it's a consortium where everyone is contributing nodes. What we provide, uh, and what other companies provide, is, is really the glue, the way of actually attaching uh, nodes to an existing network. So where I was in Sawtooth saying, yes, I'm going to create a genesis block, if you're not, if you're adding, contributing, let's say, three new nodes to that network, you wouldn't actually attempt to add a genesis block. Instead, what you would do is is be given the credentials that allow you to then wire yourself into into what is essentially a, a virtual private network. So a lot of what we do around this is is uh, when I say we, this is us as a company advising is is create a very secure environment in which to operate, which can be multi-party. So this is not within a single organisation. But um, so the short answer is. There is no reward because what you're typically doing is developing an application or service, and that is what's really of value. So, hopefully, that answers the question. I mean, reward is just feeling good about having deployed something without having to do any effort, right? So, uh, next question. If there are no other questions, we should let our next speaker. Um, come in and actually set up because there's, we're quite tight for time here. But uh, uh, thank you for joining us. Um, we'll be around um, and look forward to continuing the conversation.